Hi guys, so it's Reese Many here, um, host of Many Talks. Um, you know, so season three of the podcast, with some fantastic guests, some fantastic guests that you, you know, that we interview. We've started to speak to, um, you know, we, we deal with entrepreneurs, uh, people in finance, property development, um, and we've also started to talk to, you know, professional sports stars. And I'm really thankful and grateful to have today Archie Sharp. Um, on, on the show, so thanks for coming down, Arch. No, thank you for having me on. I um, appreciate it. You know, WBO global champion, um, going to be a world champion very, very soon. You know, me and Archie um, are working together as well. You know, we've, we've sponsored Archie as, as for, for his career, um, which we will talk about a bit later. But really, you know, what we want to talk about today is your journey, how you've got to where you are, uh, because there's a lot of young kids that are inspiring to, to be, you know, maybe an entrepreneur, maybe a sports person, a professional at whatever they're doing. Um, and what I'm doing this show for is to give a bit of value back to people, speak to people that have been there, done it, uh, gone through them tough times, because, you know, social media these days makes mm. everything look yeah. very easy. Um, mm. And, you know, there's some people out there that are probably <coughs> banging the drum every day yeah. Um, and, and, and not really getting to where, where they want to get. So look, thanks, thanks for coming on. I know that you've got a big fight coming up as well. So appreciate you, you coming to see us before, before that. And I know you're in camp. So just um, how did it start for you? You know, like I say, thanks for having me on. Um, and yeah, for me, starting my career is, is my dad really. My dad took me to a local gym yeah. from the age of seven years old. My dad boxed, my uncle boxed, everyone cut, my granddad, they all boxed, but no one took it to the next level. It was all like amateurs and just little bits like that. So I went to my local gym at the time, Eltham Amateur Boxing Club. And, uh, and then, yeah, from there, I've kind, of, I've kind of stuck at the sport and been through a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Yeah. But uh, When but, did you start? What age? So seven was when I walked through the gym. Okay. I think I'd, I'd have had my first, I had a few skills bouts. When you use three, four, five fights in one day, do yeah. you know what I mean? As little kids, um, and that's amateur, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was that's what was before you were even allowed to have an amateur fight. So it's, it's like sparring, but just with other yeah. gyms. So yeah, I went through all of that, and then my first contest would have been at the age of eleven, I believe. At the time, it was. I think they've reduced it to ten now, but mm. it was uh, eleven years old, and and that's when I had my first amateur fight, and and I've stuck to it since. Yeah, good and. You know, before that, before you went into the gym, mm. as you said, your family have always come from a boxing background. You used to watch boxing at a young age. Yeah, was it at school, you always wanted to be a boxer, or do you know what it is? I was very, very hyperactive kid. I was always, I was, I was, I was a naughty kid. I mean, in that trouble, but I was also very, like I say, very hyperactive and very for sports. So I done boxing, swimming, rugby, yeah. football. Uh, Cricket. I, I used to send you to all the classes. Just to send me to everything <laughs> and get me out of the house, basically. It was just to get me yeah. out of the house. Send yeah. me to classes and keep me away, but no. Um, so I channeled it through boxing and also for myself, I'll do it with my kids as well. Um, it's the discipline, it's the life mm. lessons. Do you know what I mean? The life lessons with the discipline, the respect. Um, that you think you're, t you, even though I was only a kid then, but I mean like with other people when, when I see and talk to, you think you, they're tough and, and they can be, a little naughty, but when you go into the into the boxing gym, it's a completely different environment. Everyone learns to put their hands up. Everyone yeah. knows how to throw a shot and take a shot. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, just yeah, for myself, it's just to bring me down a couple of levels as a young kid and just uh, teach me the the most important things in life is the respect, discipline, and and, and so much more. Mm. And life friends as well. A great group of friends. Um, it's still friends now from the age of seven. So all it's done is just put me in great stead to where I am today. What was it like? If you can cast your mind back to, you know, you said you had your, your first your skills bouts and then your first amateur fight. When, when did you, number one, realise that you was good and you wanted to continue? But when did you actually first take, did you actually take a knock and think, you know what, uh, this you know, is a bit strong for me? Or did, did that never cross your mind? It's funny because it's not long ago, I was actually looking back at some of my uh, early starts up with um, my skill bouts and my amateur fights. And yeah, I had a lot of heart, and I still have got a lot of heart. And that's and that was uh, so I've never kind of had that sort of worry was getting hit and thinking this ain't for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I love I love the sport, but I think when I started realizing, and people started saying, "Look, Arch, you can you can 
be a world champion, you can do special things here. Yeah. Was when I started going through the amateurs and doing the like the schoolboys, the elites, uh, all the amateurs, the ABA, CYPs. And when I was winning them back to back, yeah. that was kind of when I think I went 20, 26, 27 and 0 at that time. Um, with number of national titles as well. Yeah. That's uh, my, took my first loss in the amateurs on a double count back to a Russian in Russia um, in the European finals. Do you know what I mean? So that was when I first ever see what defeat was like. And, that, and even then, I don't think I even lost the fight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I think it's kind of Did that knock your confidence. Do you know what? I remember when that, I took that first loss, and yeah, it, I just said, I remember feeling to myself, I'm never gonna, do, I'm never gonna go through this pain again. And yeah. Through the amateurs, it's a bit political sometimes, and even in the pros, actually, you do see it with, with some of the decisions. So, um, but look, now being a professional, I, I take my boxing as, as serious outside the ring as I do inside the yeah. ring. Do you know what I mean? As an amateur, it wasn't really like that. Um, I was still trained hard, but I think living and growing up at that age, you, you start going out and, and ex experience life. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but now I've been. 20 years old, I turned professional. I've got a young, I've got a young family. I've got three kids, so, and um, that's when I just knew at the age of 20, this is it. Now. There's no messing around, and thankfully, I'm very grateful that I'm in a very good position, number two in the world now, and I'm pushing on for a world title yeah. fight. Fantastic. I mean, talking about that, you you saying you take when you turn professional, what what is a, like for for our listeners that are listening, what is a day in the life like for you? But in camp. Uh, in camp, it's very intense. It is very intense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The, uh, what, you know yourself with, you, with, with the business. Being a high performance person, nothing's easy. No. It's not easy to be a high performance person, and it's the same with boxing. Some people think they can just turn pro and just go through the motions, and you can't. It's yeah. it's a life. It's it's a, it's a hard work and dedication. Mm. That is what it is. And so for myself, it'll be getting up. Um, I'll be in the gym. I've got to eat at certain times. Then it's about recovery. Yeah. Then I'm back in the gym or I'm doing a run. So it's very busy. Six days a week for myself, I'd say I train, and then like a week, a Saturday I'll have off. Okay. Um, but also now I'm at that age, and I'm very, I am experienced. I'm only 26, but I've been boxing since the age of seven, so yeah. it's 19 years. It's, it's a long time in the game, at, at elite level as an amateur and now as a pro. So I'm learning my body. So I know when if if it's if it's a bit intense now, right? I'm gonna have this off, and I'm gonna do a recovery no, session. Not to over, overdo it. No, not to overdo it because I've done that in the past with fights and. I suppose you learn that for experience. So, um, so yeah, no. It's, is it's, injury a big problem, like for for boxers? Yeah, it can, be. it can be. Yeah, I was very thankful. I didn't get my first proper injury, really. Well, saying that I broke my ribs a couple of years ago, um, and even that, that took a long time to recover. I think I ended up going back in the ring with a broken rib just to uh, just to get back active. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I've been I've been pretty thankful. I've only had a couple, two probably serious injuries for myself, but it, it's so easily done when you. Train, train, train. Like, I love to train. At one point, I would literally fight, and then uh, on a Saturday and on a Monday, I'm back in the gym just for mental, mental sake. But now I'm learning to, to, to take it that bit of rest, yeah. take that little bit of back step, let my body fully recharge, and then go again. Talking about that, the, the mental stage, and you know what what does motivate you is key in any high performance person. You know, um, your mindset. Mindset's a big yeah. thing big across thing. the board on on everything. Um, how, how do you, what motivates you, number one, and how do you, you know, what do you work on? So for myself, I, I've had a mind coach through through my career. So from the age of 18, I went through a little bit of, people say to me, how oh, can you be depressed at 18? But I went through a bit of a bad stage at 18, okay. slash 19, and uh, just before I turned professional, basically. So I, I met uh, Linda Keane, who was my mind coach, um, sat down, went through a lot of uh, things with me. So I've always had a mind coach to take me to that next level because, like you say, it's so important to be mentally strong. Mm. Um, so I've always used, uh, always working, always listening to podcasts and, and um, my mentors, so keep me mentally strong. But I've got, like I say, I've got a young family. Yeah. So for myself, it's, um, I'm fighting for them as well as myself, yeah. do you know what I mean? I'm fighting for them. And also, I've been destined to be a world champion since the age of seven. So that was my goals, they were, they were my goals. I write my goals out all the time and that is, if you go back, on my goals is to be a world champion in multiweight yeah. division. So that there keeps me in the gym, keeps me training hard, keeps me focused, keeps me dedicated to the sport because um, I know where, where I want to be and I know what it, what it takes to be a high performance person yeah. and what I've got to do mentally 
I've got to be as strong as I am physically. Because if you're not mentally, if you're not mentally strong, you can be in the best shape as you want in the gym. If you if you haven't got it mentally, mm. there's Thank no you point. Know. Well, you know yourself. Do you know what I mean? With, with what you do, you're at a very high level of what you do, and you know if you're not mentally in the game, yeah, think to, exactly. Things don't go right. Exactly, yeah. and you can't get that momentum going. Yeah, just just going back to you know, as, as you said before, you turned professional. You you know that's why you spoke to the mind coach. You weren't in a great place um, with the problems that you know we've all faced ourselves with the last eighteen months, probably two years, pandemic, lockdown, things like that. You know, you you listen to the news or you listen to people. You, depression and people down is a big thing at the moment. Mm. Um, speaking from experience, you've been there. I mean, people that that are feeling low and you know just don't know where to go. What what kind of piece of advice could you give them, you know, to you know maybe try and get themselves out of the situation that they are in? Well, the first thing I done was turn the news off and I haven't watched the news <laughs> since. Do you know what I mean? It's just negative, negative, negative. The minute, yeah. the minute you wake up, do you know what it is for me? I do simple, simple things. I wake up every morning. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be. I'm wa I'm grateful to wake up to another day. I'm grateful to see my kids. Everyone in the world has got something to be grateful for. Yeah. Whether, uh, do you know what I mean? Whether it's the homeless person who's got a cardboard box to keep the show, the wind off them, do you know what I mean? Whatever it is, someone's got something to be grateful for. And that's what I always write, my 10, 10 things of gratitude every day. And I think that's, that's where I would start personally, is just stop looking at what you haven't got. And what you, what you have uh, got. Yeah, and look at what you have got. Do you know what I mean? I think that's, being present is the, is the most important thing. And then the momentum goes, I and mean, once you realise how grateful you are for everything you've got, things just start to fall into place. Do you know what I mean? So. And is it talking to people about it? Because you know, a lot yeah. of, we, we hear a lot of people don't talk. You know, a lot of people hold it in. They mm. don't want to talk to people for you know various reasons. They feel that it's not the right place. They don't want to burden the other person. Whatever the situation is, but. You know, I think it's important that if you're not feeling yourself, you do need to let it out and speak to, to people that... There's, there's plenty of people that would listen to you. Yeah, definitely. Speaking to people is is the main thing I've done. Like I say, having Linda Keane as my mind coach was speaking to her and just... How did you make that decision to, to get to her? Did you ask somebody else's advice? Do you know what? I um, She come to the gym once and that was it. My attention was so solely on what she was saying. So. Then she pulled me aside and we started working together from there. But then I kind of let it slip a little bit. And I remember me, when I first got my missus at the time, it was, the boxing was hard. Like, people think you're on TV and you're earning fortunes, do you know what I mean? And it weren't like that at all. So everything was hard. And my stepdaughter, so I was a dad overnight at the age of 20. Yeah. Um, took on a young family. So uh, it was, we was in a bit, I was in a bit of a bad place mentally. Yeah. And she just said, look, listen, you need to go and get help. And otherwise, do you know what I mean? It's not going to be good. So I thought, you know, well, we'll go and get help. And, and being a man's man, coming from my, like my dad, my granddad, they weren't, it was never about talking. So that's mm. why I, I was used to just build it up. Yeah, no, cause, yeah. yeah hold it in. Because I thought, no, I can't, I'm a weak man if I start talking to people. Yeah. But now I can rub it on all day long. But do you know what I do now? If I do have a bit of a bit of a wobble, I just concentrate on what I'm, and think about what I'm saying before I say it. Yeah. So if I'm going to talk to someone, I don't want to be all depressive. And because the more you keep, Talking depressive, you're gonna be, feel it. you're gonna feel it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So that's why I always start with the main thing. That's my main advice to anyone out there who, who is struggling, is just take five minutes and just think about all the things you have got to be grateful for, because there's so much to be grateful for. Some great advice, um, you know, for anybody that that is um, going through anything like that. Some great advice for you to, you know, talk to people um, and always look at. You know what what you've got going for yourself everyone's mm. got good things going for yourself so start with little things not big steps little steps and something to you know achieve um talking back to boxing and going back to um fights that have, have happened recently um joshua music back in september yeah um a lot of people were shocked with the outcome what, what was your take on that do you know what i wasn't i wasn't shocked with the outcome myself okay. um because I know Usyk is such a great fighter. The only maybe better concern I might have had on the night was the size difference, because there was a big size difference yeah. there. Um, but down to pure boxing skills, and, and I've seen it with AJ in a couple of fights before. I've said, even with the Andrew Ruiz fight, anyone who boxes Joshua um, and just, just be un, unorthodox mm. will beat Joshua. 
And I think that's what happened with Usyk. He came there with a great game plan. He stuck to his game plan. And I think if the rematch happens, I personally believe it'll be the same outcome. Do you? Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't think Joshua could beat Usyk. That's just my personal opinion. I think Usyk's a phenomenal fighter. Um, unless Usyk goes and does another Andy Ruiz and blows up and yeah. and does what he does on that last fight that Andy Ruiz done, because I do believe Andy Ruiz, if he stuck to his game plan, what he done on the first time, he could have beat AJ again. But T taking no credit away from Anthony Joshua, obviously what a great fighter, done so well out of the business, fair play to him. Oh yeah, very, very And strong. when he did box Marie's on the second time, he did stick to a game plan. Mm. He did stick to a game plan, which was obviously good. But I just believe personally with Usyk, Usyk's very too well scored for that. He's got all sorts of game plans, do you know yeah. what I mean? So I just can't see AJ beating Usyk. And, and you think long as he sticks to his game plan again, it'd probably be the same result is what you're saying? Yeah, I yeah. do. I do. I reckon Usyk just does what he does, um, and it, and and he'll win. What what fights do you enjoy watching? Uh, do you know what Canelo Alvarez at the minute is obviously a lot like the same with yeah. a lot of people. He's phenomenal to watch, and just the way that he goes up and down weights and still <laughs> does it. Now he's talking about light heavyweight or cruiserweight, any. So uh, so yeah, that's what I like to watch. But I, I watch all sorts of fights. I watch fights from back. Years ago, like the Willie Peps and things like that, all the way through to Prince Nassim and Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. all the old school fighters. I do study my boxing. I love yeah. my boxing, so uh, I do. Who's your favourite back from whenever? Like your I've got a lot of lot, idol. Do you know what? Mike Tyson can punch for fun. Do you know what I mean? He was an animal in the ring. Sugar Ray Lem Leonard had uh, unbelievable footwork and skills. So people like them. Um, Antonio Brera. Yeah. Loads of fighters. The old school fighters I love, I do love. And like I say, even Floyd Mayweather, what he does is unbelievable. Like his defence is just phenomenal. So many great fighters and great talents out there and I study them all. Mm. Also, obviously, Dylan White um, looking to get a shot um, at Tyson Fury. What's, what's your take on that? If he does get the shot, then fair play, because I do believe that he's been sitting there for a long time yes. now, waiting for his shot. So. And he takes any fight as well, doesn't exactly. he? Exactly, so fair play to... Um, to Dylan White, I think he, he definitely deserves his shot. Against Tyson Fury though, out of all of them, I just can't see no one beating Tyson Fury in the heavyweight division. I just no. can't see it. I really no can't. No one at all? No, not at the minute. All the time he's in his, how he is at the minute, I can't see anyone beating him. No. In, interesting, I, yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with you as well. He's my, he is my favourite. Um, why, why do you think that? Just because of his skill set? His, his skill set, his mentality. Um, he's got heart of a lion. Yeah, everything um, that he's done. Everything, everything that he's done and he's been through. I remember years ago when he done an interview and he was in a bad place, depression, and I, and I remember yeah. saying then, if he ever comes back and fights, it, it'll clean up the division. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've been a massive fan of Tyson for a very long time. And I know Tyson, and I know that he's, listen, mentally, he's in, he's in the best shape he's ever. And like I said, I can't see any heavyweight out there beating him. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Um, talking about his brother <laughs> and, oh, Tommy, and, yeah. and, he, and his fight that he's got coming up. What, what, what do you make of that? It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting, <laughs> definitely interesting. I need a YouTuber at uh, Super <laughs> Featherweight. <laughs> uh, but no, fair play to Tommy. I mean, he's got himself a great opportunity. I reckon he'll earn a nice few quid as well. He's only young himself. Do you think he'll win that fight? I think he's got a big challenge in front of him. Yeah. I think. Because the thing is with Jake Paul and these Logan Pauls and, and these YouTubers, the difference is with Jake Paul and Logan, they're, they're actually dedicated to boxing, they actually can box. Yeah. So not just YouTubers have come in and they're throwing windmills, like they're actually doing well and they're training hard and they're, putting dead, and they're putting the graft in, you know what I mean? They're dedicating their life to boxing. Mm. So regardless what people say, oh, he's only a YouTuber, he's not a YouTuber anymore. He's had a few fights now, he's coming through and look, he's Tommy Fury, who hasn't had the experience either yeah. as an amateur, he's only experienced it, it, learning on the job. So they're both learning on the job. So that's mm. why it's, it's an intriguing um, fight. So whatever goes on either way, there's no discredit to any of them. Me, that's what I personally yeah. think. Just because there's a lot of pressure on Tommy Fury's shoulders being Tyson Fury's brother and I think being a, a boxer. Because yeah. if he does lose, He's still got time to come back from it. Of course he can. It's not like a career-ending loss, is it? Definitely not. And the money that he's probably earned from it yeah. as well, and the experience and the big build-up, the big hype of a fight, it's massive. Do you know what I mean? So, so no, fair play to both fighters making it happen and, and best of luck to them. But I, I'm going to back Tommy, and uh, I'm going to back Tommy Fury to win. Yeah, great. Um, 
I, I hope you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't think of anything um, worse than than a, than a defeat for him, to be honest with you. I hope that he wins. Um, and as you said, the hype around the fight's fantastic. It's big. There's one thing that you can say uh, about uh, Jake Paul is that, you know, he knows how to, to put an event on and knows how to get press and knows how to build something up. Yeah, definitely, isn't it? That's great marketing. Yeah. Great marketing. That's exactly. So let's talk about your fight coming up um, in, in Dubai. Yeah. So something new, new challenge, new territory. Um, how do you feel about that when you, you got offered it? Any, you know, all going overseas or was you jumping at the opportunity? No, jumping. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. This is what it's all about for me, Liz, just going out, just going abroad. I say, I was about to say out, out of my comfort zone because obviously everyone's used to just being uh, 21 fights in London mm. or, or in the UK. But it's nice. This is what I, this is what I fry for. This is what makes me want to be the best is going out. I've always said I want to box in Vegas um, and abroad and yeah. Dubai. What an opportunity. It's flying out there at the minute. Mm. Um, it's massive. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm really excited. The Coca-Cola Arena as well. What a pucker venue that looks like. Do you know what I mean? It looks beautiful. So, uh, I'm excited to put on a masterclass. And I think with the opponent that I've got, former world champion, Jonathan Romero, who's 33-1, uh, and, one, and the, the only loss that he had was to Kiko Martinez when Kiko beat him for his world title. Um, a Colombian kid, so we've got a, we've got a big fight in front of us, and uh, I'm excited to to put on a masterclass. I think everyone's going to see the best Archie Sharp when when I come across these good opponents. Who yeah. this fella's been Olympics, um, and uh, like I say, he's a what form world champion. So it should make you step up. Make me step up, bring my A game to yeah. A game. Fantastic. And after that, what's what's next? I know we we talk about um, world title fights. Yeah. So. I'll, I suppose a lot of you will see that me and Shakur Stevenson have been going back and forth. We was on Talk Sport back and forth the other day, so uh, so no, that's exciting. But we'll see what Shakur Stevenson wants to do. Whether, like, like I say, at the minute I was building myself in a mandatory position, yeah. so at the minute uh, it'll only be a voluntary if he took the fight. So I've got to put myself. If he doesn't want to take that fight, which they're not at the minute, I've got to force it. So I've just got yeah. to keep winning, keep boxing these good opponents, and put myself in a position where they've got, got to. to. Or if he doesn't, he's, he's going to vacate and move up, and it will come vacant, and I'll, and I'll, I'll win the WBO world title vacant, which, um, which either way, I just want to get my hands on that WBO world title and then push on for more, because yeah. that's just the starting point for me. Yeah. Get that world title and then push on. There's so many great fighters out there, even at lightweight. Yeah. I look to move up to there. There's some big fights out there. You look to move up as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I get, I've got this, I've got the stamp for it. Do you know what I mean? I, with the right nutrition as well. I walk around big, not out of shape, I mean like in, in good shape, so it's not like I'm going to be small for lightweight. Um, with the right training to just keep progressing. Um, there's some big fights out there in the lightweight divisions. You've got like Devin a &E, Shakur will be going to lightweight as well at some point. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. I'm in, I'm in a good place, everything's all all really good. Everything's looking good for yourself? Yeah, 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 just got to keep winning. Yeah. Go and win again uh, in December. And then like I say, just keep pushing on and get that world title shot. Great. Well, look, is there anything that we've missed through your story that we haven't spoke about? Anything that you can think could give value to anybody that was, you know, look, thinking or acting like a young Archie Sharp back in the day that might just need that little golden nugget to be able to step on? Nothing comes easy. I know everyone probably hears it, but nothing comes easy. I've had 21 fights now and I feel like my career's only starting now. Like, I've been very blessed uh, with the team. Obviously, MTK, is, I'm still with, uh, with, I'm not with Frank anymore, but I mean, I've been very blessed to be uh, to be where I am. Mm. And I just feel like my career's just starting now. I'm just, the momentum's going now. Um, so it's been, it hasn't been an easy road. That's what I'm trying to say. It hasn't been an easy road. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of dedication. So anyone out there who's thinking, oh, it's not happened yet, just keep on the grind. Persistence is key. Yeah. If you've got a burning desire, just keep that persistence and, and, and you will be there and you will make it. Yeah, fantastic advice. I mean, that, that wraps up today's interview with Archie. Hopefully you took some takeaways. Obviously we've got the, the global WBO belt here in front of us as well. Great honor to um, have Archie on the show today. Thanks for um, listening and this should give some inspiration to a lot of boxing fans and a a lot of people um, around the around the UK and hopefully around the world. So and, thanks for coming on. And I just want to say um, a massive thanks to yourself um, and the investment team for your support. And just want to take time. Lovely. Great, grateful there. So thank Appreciate you very much. That. Appreciate that.
Thank you very much. So we look to be doing bigger and better things with Archie as well. So stay tuned to see what's coming and thanks a lot.